Hey guys and welcome to my Dutch Civ overview. In this video I'll be going over the unique units and technologies of the Dutch, as well as their unique and team cards, and then following it up finally with some gameplay to give you guys an idea of how the Civ plays overall. So let's go ahead and get started with their civilization bonus. So their settlers cost coin instead of food and have a lower train limit, but gather mines 15% faster and then begin with an envoy. So Basically just already starting off, the Dutch play very differently in kind of all their build orders than in any other civilization um, because, as it says, their villagers cost uh, coin instead of food. So at the beginning of the game, you'll generally be putting all your, um, you know, settlers onto the mine to start off with. And generally you can sustain that production with around five or six villagers. And then at some point you'll kind of take them off, gather food to age up, and that's kind of how they play in the first age. So it's pretty interesting um, how they play in general since you're always going to be going for gold first and then at some point you have to make a decision when you're going to switch over to food and other resources um so it's definitely a little different to get used to than other civilizations already like right off the bat from that um but they are very good at getting coin overall so there's some interesting strategies that we can talk about in a little bit with that um and then they also get the envoy uh, and i guess we'll just go over the envoy right now so the envoy is a dutch reconnaissance unit with a good line of sight but but a weak attack so you can get up to th three of these, I believe, and they're basically just really good scouts. So you can, you know, get three of these and just have line of sight pretty much all over the map at that point. So you can see if there's any attacks coming in or, you know, where their villagers are, where their weak points in the base are, all that kind of stuff. So these envoys are a pretty good unit to get, and it's nice to start the game with them to help you scout out those treasures and just see what your opponent's up to at the beginning of the game. Um, so that's pretty good. Going back over here to the Royal Guard units. Uh, we have the Halberdier, or the Stad Stadschwat, and then we have the Reuter, the Carabiner. And I guess we'll just go ahead and talk about the Reuter unique unit, since we've already covered the Envoy. So the Reuter is the pretty much the only Dutch land unique unit, and so they're a ranged cavalry armed with pistols, and they're good against cavalry and artillery. Um, something else to know about these guys, they only cost one population, um, and so you can get a ton of these guys, you know, you could have like hundreds of these um, Also because of their civilization bonus where you have a lower train limit on your villagers Generally the Dutch what it means is you're gonna have a, a pretty low villager count So you can have a very big army, but your overall economy will be Generally smaller than other civilizations when you're trying to boom. So it's just something to be aware of um, So but these guys can kind of take advantage of that extra population space by only costing one population um, and generally I'd say they're, since they do only cost one population, they're kind of a weak unit and they're, you know, their main thing is around massing these guys really. And you can tell they only cost 30 food, 75 gold. And as we'll see in a minute, um, you know, gold usually isn't a problem. So you can, you'll be able to spam a lot of these guys out. Um, and it can be pretty fun. But going over a little more detail on their stats here, um, they have a 3x bonus versus hand cav. They have a 2x bonus versus artillery and a 0.5x bonus versus villagers. You'll notice without too many of these, you're actually going to have a pretty hard time killing villagers. They do have like a pretty weak attack overall. You really need those bonuses to help you out. They will shred cavalry, and they're extremely good at kiting enemies around. But you'll notice they're they're pretty weak against any like skirmisher or just long range uh, infantry unit. Um, so you got to watch, or even a uh, ranged cavalry unit. So you just got to watch out for those kind of units. So overall. Um, I don't think it's like an amazingly strong unit. It's definitely fun to play to kite people around. Um, but yeah, so that's their uh, ranged cavalry unique unit. And then I don't think it shows it on here, but then their other unique unit is a, is a Floyd, or however you pronounce that, and it's basically a ship. Um, yeah, I don't see it here. But um, the Floyd is a unique ship, and um, it's pretty similar to the Galleon, but it has less hit points and more attack. Um, so I don't have too much to say about that. I'm not super into like the naval combat in this game, so I don't keep up with, you know, all the different ways to play with the Navy. So I don't have too much to say about the Floyd. I guess it's an okay unit. Um, look, you guys just let me know what you think about them. I don't use them too much, so be curious to hear what others think. Um, and then we have the, actually, before we move on to the building real quick, um, the, it doesn't say this anywhere here, um, which is one kind of thing about AOE 3. There's some like weird uh, things that it just doesn't tell you about civilizations. Um, but if you look it up, you'll realize that you actually get skirmishers in the Commerce Age. Um, let me go over. I, I wonder if it shows it here. Just go to the barracks. Oh, yeah, so I guess it does show it here. Um, yeah, so you get the skirmishers and the uh, Commerce Age um, rather than the... Um, 
uh, rather than the third uh, Fortress Sage like every other Civ does. So generally, most Dutch strategies are around using Skirmishers in the Commerce Sage. Um, you know, building 10 or more of these and maybe harassing your enemy while you try to build your banks and everything behind that. Um, so yeah, your kind of main units are usually like Skirmishers, some artillery for anti-infantry, um, and then maybe some Reuters for anti-cavalry. Those, those are kind of like your main units as Dutch generally. Um, oh, maybe, maybe some halberdiers too, but you know, I, I wouldn't say halberdiers are meta since they're so slow. Although they do have a unique upgrade here that we can actually go over right now. Or actually, that wasn't a card I'm thinking of, but we'll go over the unique monastery upgrades anyways. Um, so their unique monastery upgrades, or actually, sorry, before I go to monastery upgrades, so their unique building is a bank. And again, I don't think their tech tree actually shows a bank. Let's see. Okay, it does show a bank. So 350 food, 350 wood, and the Dutch building that produces coin. So this is pretty critical to all the, D the Dutch strategies. Um, since you have a lower villager train limit, these banks are pretty crucial for you. And, you know, people have different build orders. Some people build a bank really early as you're aging up. Some people build two banks before going fast fortress. Um, it kind of just depends on the build order. But whatever you do, you're obviously going to want banks and to tr eventually try to max these banks out. And then there's cards and technologies to give you more banks. Um, but they're very crucial since you, as I said, don't have as many villagers. So your economy is essentially capped. So you really need this bank to, uh, you know, just improve your economy, give you more gold. Um, and that's how you'll, you know, aside from estates, you'll mainly just have banks and maybe one estate or something. So then let's go back over here to the unique church upgrades. So first off, we have coffee trade. Uh, speculative trading practices let you establish two more banks. Um, so yeah, you can basically just build two more banks. It does limit your military speed by 10%, which is kind of unfortunate. I feel like the Dutch already aren't the best civilization, so I feel like that's kind of unnecessary. Like they could just have the build limit increase without that speed decrease. But regardless, um, you'll usually be picking this up um, if you can, just because you want the two extra banks for your economy. So. Just because of this um, tech alone, you'll usually be getting the unique monastery upgrade just so you can have more banks. Uh, next we have ward gelders, ships five ward gelders, powerful heavy, heavy cavalry. Um, you know, generally just mercenaries. Uh, good cards to send if you have a lot of gold that you want to use on these and you need them kind of uh, to like defend you or just want some, you know, heavy cab to, um, you know, put some different kind of units into your force. So just depends on the situation, of course, like all the mercenaries. And then we have blue guards, ships 30 musket armed blue guards from the homeland. So it delivers 30 musketeers, guard, mus guard musketeers, data set to active. So they, they come in as uh, guards, I guess, or veterans. And you get 30 musketeers. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want musketeers, 30 musketeers, then uh, you can go ahead and send that shipment. That might be useful because one thing the Dutch don't have is actually skirmishers, generally. So if you're having a lot of problems with, I guess, cavalry, but you really shouldn't. You know, the the Reuters are going to kind of fill the anti-cavalry spot that musketeers will, will sort of function as, I guess, in some cases. I mean, musketeers are more just like a general unit, but, um, you know, if you're trying to protect your skirmishers, I guess, and you want some kind of infantry in front of them, then you could get those musketeers and kind of have... A little bit of a meat shield for cavalry coming in if you're really having a problem with that. So it, it could be useful in a niche situation. Um, in late game, you'll probably have plenty of gold, so you know you might as well get it if you if you want to get it and it, you think it could help you. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the unique technologies and units for the Dutch. Um, it's not too many. Like I said, um, the uniqueness is usually or is mainly around their you know, gathering coin instead of food for their villagers, um, and then building these banks. Those are really like their main things. And then this Reuter is just kind of their main unique unit. Um, and it's very good at anti-cavalry, only takes one pop space, but other than that, it's it's a pretty weak unit. You know, you can kill villagers, but again, they're, they're good at raiding just because they're fast, but they actually don't do very much damage. So don't expect these guys to do too much aside from just killing hand cavalry. So... Yeah, that is all the Dutch unique units and technologies. So with that, let's go ahead and look at the decks that you're going to be building as the Dutch. So now on to the decks for the Dutch. And I did just want to mention, because I forgot to do it in the unit section, that 
Um, the Dutch revolts are the United States, Brazil, Indonesia, and South Africa. And I believe they're, I think South Africa of those is the best uh, revolts, or that's what I've heard people say. I haven't tried it out too much myself. I mean, it definitely seems like the strongest one. Um, but yeah, so try it out for yourself. I've, I've heard some good things about the South African revolt. So if you guys are looking to revolt, then maybe try out that one. Um, all right, and then now on to the cards here. So, um, I don't know why, okay, right, okay. So first we have the three settlers card. Um, and I just put these in here to give you an idea. Um, as someone had commented in a previous video, um, they wanted not just the unique cards, but you know, kind of some cards around maybe how the sieve plays generally, um, and just some useful cards that you're usually gonna be taking as a civilization. So that's kind of why these are in here. So usually as Dutch, you'll pretty much always want to take these settler cards, just to, especially the three settler card for a boost to your early economy. Um, super useful to get up a good villager count at the beginning of the game. Um, but yeah, not, not too much else to say about that, just a very good card. Hot Air Balloons, your explorer hero gains the ability to use temporary hot air balloons to explore the map. Um, I wouldn't take this, you already have the uh, envoys for your scouting, so you probably don't need this, but... I mean, as you can see, one of the Dutch's kind of skills is just having amazing map control or line of sight everywhere. So if you want to have a just even better light, uh, you know, map control or line of sight, then maybe you'd take this, but probably not worth it. And here's some interesting ones. I don't think these really make sense to be exploration age, but either way, we have the Bank of Amsterdam and the Bank of Rotterdam, which both increase your bank build limit by one. So usually you're going to be taking these two cards, but you're actually not going to be using them till later in the game when you're at your bank build limit. But, you know, usually you're going to want to be taking these cards just, like I said, for more economy, more banks. Um, that's all good stuff. And kind of similarly, you you also have um, these two cards here. So Cobertism, you get 1.5 food trickle rate. Um, and you probably won't be taking this early just because you want the settlers and then to get the age 2 cards. But, um, you know, if you want some food trickle late game, if you think it's going to go for a really long game, then you might want to consider taking this. But... I wouldn't say this is essential, but it, it could be useful if you want just a little bit of better economy for your food. And then we have South Sea Bubble. Uh, exchange all of your current coin for a greater amount of wood. So similarly, if you're kind of, this could be useful in a couple of cases. So maybe you're in a treaty game and you're just getting as much gold as you can and then exchange it for wood. Um, or, you know, maybe you're just running really low on wood at some point in the game and you want to, you know, call on this card. Um, I think it's more of a treaty card just because it's a very specific situation where you can make the most use out of this. Um, so yeah, maybe useful in treaty, otherwise probably don't take this. Four settlers, same with three settlers, just, uh, you know, four settlers in age two if you want to take that. Um, and I also didn't put the 300 wood up here, but yeah, 300 wood and 700 wood are in a lot of build orders because people want to get banks out as fast as possible. So depending on what kind of order you want to go or how you want to play the Dutch, You'll probably, you may, you know, want to take 300 wood or 700 wood just to help get those banks out faster. Keep your guys on gold or keep your guys on food to, you know, be able to age up and everything. And then we have infantry attack, you know, pikeman, halberdier, and skirmisher attack increased by 15%. So pretty good since you're going to be probably building out of skirmishers. Uh, bank wagon sends a bank wagon that can build a bank. So this is pretty much the same as saying, you know, you get 350 food and 350 wood. Um, so, yeah, just think about if you want to take that. I would say, you know, just send the 700 wood because essentially these are equivalent, except this one is going to say, you know, half of that is 350 food and then you get 350 wood, essentially, since that's what the bank cost. So if you need food and wood or you're low on both, then maybe this could be useful, but... Yeah, I mean, you're probably just better off sending these shipments than just focusing on single resources. It's, it's probably just easier, so yeah, it's up to you, though. Uh, then we have Religious Freedom, which I'm just pointing out because it gives you the church unique Dutch improvements, and you'll pretty much always be sending this card as Dutch just to up the bank limit uh, like we talked about earlier. Then we have Dutch East India Company. Uh, banks cost less and have more hit points. Food cost minus 15%, wood cost minus 15%. I personally don't use this card because usually at, by the time I would even send this card, I would already have maybe like two to four banks up. So it seems like pretty low return on this card for, you know, having to send that shipment. So 
I don't know. Let me let me know if you guys use this card to a good effect, but it seems like by the time you would consider this card, you'd already have built like half your bank, so it's probably not worth it. But yeah, I mean, I haven't done the, the hard math around it, but I usually value some of these other shipments over this, you know, because you're already going to be sending probably, you know, wood, maybe settlers, you want the hand attack, you want the monastery. I mean, you already want a lot of these upgrades. I don't know that you can really fit it in this car at that point. But anyway, something to consider. Uh, military reforms. Halberdiers march significantly more quickly, but do less damage against infantry. Uh, you know, again, I don't build a lot of halberdiers, so I'm never going to run this card, but... I guess if you wanted to, you know, have a strategy based around their halberdiers, or, you know, in your games you build a lot of halberdiers, then this could be pretty useful for you. Um, speed by 20%, that is pretty significant. Um, but you also have to realize that, you know, if you're getting the unique monastery improvement, essentially this will be a net 10% increase in their speed. Um, you know, because this is going to take minus 10%, then you're going to add 10% or 20%, so net 10%. And they do less damage to infantry because of this. Not a, not a whole lot less, but a little bit. So, I don't know. I would just avoid halberdiers, honestly. Um, but if you really want to make them and speed is a huge issue, then you could definitely take this card. So next we have infantry combat. Pikeman, halberdier, and skirmisher attack and hit points increased. Again, you know, always consider taking this card just for those skirmisher hit points and attack damage. Uh, pretty useful. And then similarly for cavalry, all cavalry attack and hit points increased. So if, mainly for your Reuters, you want their, you know, you really want their attack to be increased. Their hit points don't matter as much, but you really want to up their attack because, like I said, like early in their attack is pretty atrocious. Like they have a hard time even killing villagers, so it's nice to get that attack up. And then we have Admiral Trump. <laughs> uh, Floyd hit points greatly increased, uh, so hit points increased by 75%. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if you're playing a naval map, I'm sure this is useful. Otherwise, don't bother. Um, tulip speculation, bank coin production increased, um, and then auto gather work rate for that coin is increased by 20%. So always take this card pretty much. Yeah, I would always take this card just because, you know, at that point in the game, you're going to have, what is it, like seven or eight banks probably. And I mean, you, you really need the extra economy as Dutch. You, you have factories in the industrial age, but other than that, I mean... You're stuck with your, I, I don't know what it is in Definitive Edition, but around like 50 to 60 um, settler limit, and then your banks. So anything you can do to improve your economy is really good as Dutch, because um, you're always going to kind of struggle with this. The whole thing with Dutch is you have a small economy, the banks help, factories help, all, and this helps, all of that help. But at the end of the day, your economy is just going to be flat out smaller than other civilizations because of your really low settler train limit. With the exception maybe being on a naval map where you can get fishing ships. But yeah, anyways, the, the point is your your economy is always going to be smaller as Dutch compared to other civilizations, so you need to make up for that. And the way Dutch really makes up for it is in their military, since they can have a larger military. So, I mean, the Dutch are really all about, um, you know, building your, your big army and winning every engagement. I mean, if you lose, it's going to be hard to rebuild because you don't have a big economy. Um but anyways, yeah, the point is, um, take this card, <laughs> increase your economy, always good to do as a Dutch, since that's kind of their weak point. So next, let's move on to these team cards. So first we have Team 3 Envoy, Dutch reconnaissance, you know, with a good line of sight, delivers 3 Envoy. Um, this is, <clears throat> it's interesting, I don't know if this is that useful, I mean, it's it, it is also kind of crazy though, I mean, it's not just sending one envoy, it's literally sending three envoy to everyone on your team. So, I mean, if you send this, like, you're, you know, if you're in a 3v3, even a 4v4, if you guys space out all of their envoys across the map, you'll be able to see so much. Like, you'll, I mean, I feel like you'll be able to see pretty much the entire map. So, I don't know, it's hard to say. I'd say maybe, maybe if they're, like, a team where you're unsure if they're going to rush you down or not. Maybe you'd send this just to maintain line of sight, and you could, you know, send it out push shipment if you needed to, something like that. But you'd have to have a pretty good reason to send this over, you know, three settlers or other ones. So I don't know. Maybe you go like three settlers into this and just kind of go for a defensive strategy. You could consider that. But yeah, like like a lot of these team ones in the first age, they're just, they're just so hard to fit in. Um, so. I don't know, but I mean, if you think about it, even late game, these could be useful because you're just maintaining map control with an amazing line of sight. 
So I don't know if you value uh, map control or, or, you know, line of sight around the map really highly, then definitely take this card. But if you don't take advantage of that increased line of sight, then it'll just be a waste. So anyways, uh, then we have team cheap market improvements. So it basically makes all those kind of uh, market improvements cheaper. Um, haven't done that math on this one, but you know, I'm kind of thinking that this could actually be really good, but you'd, you'd have to have a specific strategy around it, you know, cause like this one and this one, they're both kind of around the strategy of like booming your team economy, um, and doing it safely. So if you send this like right away and everyone on your team builds a market, it gets these upgrades. I mean, you, you should be ahead of your opponents, but um, I mean, you're playing a supporting role at that point. You're not going to be the main one with like the best economy or anything. So if your teammates are going to cover for you, if you send this card, then, you know, you could send this card, but I would, I would only use this if you have a, a you know, dedicated team and you guys all know that you're going to get a lot of market improvements early for whatever reason. And if you do plan on doing that, then this, I think this could be pretty good, but I haven't really tested it myself just cause yeah, I mean, I feel like you need a, a dedicated 4v4 team to actually take good use of this. Anyways, then we have Team Spice Trade. Team villagers gather food from hunted animals, berries, and cherry orchards faster. Uh, so it looks like hunted animals by 15%, berry bush by 15%, and so on. Um, I would say it's the same kind of reasoning as Team Cheap Market Improvements. Um, you know, maybe you have specific strategies around getting a lot of food early, something like that this could be useful um yeah i don't i don't think as much else to say i think these are pretty similar and that like they're both just economy upgrades very early if your team you know if you're working together and y'all can take good advantage of these then send them but if you're just playing with randoms it, it might not be worth it because you don't really know what they're going to go for or how much it's actually going to help them out so next we have team two surgeons uh, like everyone else has in the european uh, civs and then we have team inf infantry hit points. Uh, so increase infantry hit points by 10% Dutch only extra 5%. So I guess uh, Dutch only gets the 5% uh, extra f uh, infantry hit points. Um, so this will improve your skirmishers and your halves mainly since those are going to be the two that you're really sending. Um, I think this is okay. I would say, I would say send this if your if your team's building out of infantry. But I think if if you're doing it just for yourself, um, I I think you know skirmishers the hit points increase. I don't know that's gonna help them all that much. I mean, fifteen percent is nice, but you might as well just send your own card for the fifteen percent uh, HP and attack. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you plan on sending a lot of in infantry and you know your team is going to also, then take this card. Otherwise, just stick with your own infantry hit points upgrades. Um, and that'll probably be just fine. Then we have Team Native Warrior Societies, um, so you can train more Native Warriors. Um, I think this is this could be pretty good, but obviously it's just niche. So if you happen to be on a, a map with a lot of Native posts, and you know, you're, and you're going to take control of those, um, this is pretty good. It, it also kind of synergizes with the Dutch strategy of having a very large army. Because since native warriors don't take up pop space, you know, you could have a 150 man army plus, you know, extra native warriors. So, I mean, you could probably get close to like a 200 person army if you, if you really wanted to and had control of all, like, all the native warrior posts. Um, so yeah, I, I think this could, it, this would be more like a fun strategy. Like you just want to have an, an insanely big military as a Dutch and just, you know, pump out a lot of natives and just have this huge army. If that's what you want to do, go for this card, but I think in normal games, unless, you know, you're really confident in your team, you know, building a lot of native, native warriors along with you, then, um, uh, you know, don't take it unless you have a team who, you know, you're, who, you know, are going to take advantage of this. Uh, then we have team cohorn and mortars, team mortar attack increased for Chinese and Japanese allies, hand mortar and Morutaru attack increased. Um, I think this is kind of trash, to be honest. You know, 20% mortar attack increase. I've never, you know, admittedly, I've never sent this card, but just thinking about it, I mean, when do your mortars really need more attack? They already do so much damage. 
they already knock down buildings incredibly quickly and you're in the industrial age you can build just a couple more of them um yeah i just don't see this being useful at all to be honest i think you know you see this and you go oh i could combo this with team two mortars and our mortars are just going to shred the enemy buildings and yeah i mean i'm sure they will but they are they already do that i mean i really don't think you need any extra attack on mortars they already do so much damage you know if you can't protect your mortars um then that's a whole different problem you know what i mean like the the mortars can fire from so far away that all you have to do is defend them and the, the damage isn't really the problem it's more just you need to siege them protect your mortars and they're going to kill everything anyways so i i just don't see this card like playing any sort of role anywhere like either your mortars are going to be defended and kill everything or they're not in which case this is the damage is useless anyways and you'd rather have like hit points i guess in that case so i think pretty useless i think maybe feels like hit points or hit points and attack it might be interesting just because you know if the mortars are more survivable that could actually be a benefit because you wanted to keep them alive um but for just damage increase you know it's like taking a glass cannon and just adding more damage like it's just unnecessary and probably you know just not worth taking at all in my opinion so as i mentioned team two mortars and like i say every video you know these are good if you're snowballing the game um, or if the enemy just has defensive forts um, or, you know, a lot of walls or something and you just want to help your team take all of this out, then you could consider taking this card. I generally don't take it. I think at this point in the game, everyone, you know, has enough resources for mortars regardless. So I don't think it's that useful. But if you want to, it, it could be a fun card just to see, you know, eight mortars roll up on the enemy base if you're playing a 4v4 and stuff like that. But generally, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, same idea with Team 1 Mortar, but for naval maps. Then lastly, we have uh, Team Ships 2, Privateers, to your Colony. Again, same reasoning as this. I, I think this is even more trash. Um, to be honest, I mean, if you're in the Industrial Age on a naval map and you can't get enough ships, like, if your economy's that bad, you're probably going to lose anyways. So paying 500 gold for two Privateers, just, I don't know, it seems kind of pointless to me. Um, you know... You should either already have naval control at that point. I don't think two privateers in the industrial age is, re is really going to be a turning point for a game. So I would definitely skip this one. I think it's a pretty awful card. Um, but yeah, that is all the team cards and all the unique cards for the Dutch. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay so you guys can see how the Dutch play overall. So now into the gameplay section. In this game, I was playing a 3v3 where I only built Reuters. The link to that video is in the description below, but generally the actual build you'd be doing is something like 10 skirmishers in the Commerce Age, and then use those to harass or defend your base, and then try to get to the Fortress Age as soon as possible. Uh, from there, you can do some kind of combination like maybe Reuters plus Falconets for that anti-infantry, anti-cav combo, or if you don't have enough gold for that, then you could just stick with Reuters and skirmishers. And to me, the Dutch are kind of a weird civilization in that they feel pretty weak throughout the early game. And then they become kind of a powerhouse in the very late game, but it's not because of any particular unit or their economy. Um, in fact, the Dutch can't even boom past around 50 villagers, and it takes them a while for the bank trickle to catch up with the other civilization booms. Plus, you have to waste shipments and upgrading these banks specifically. However, then in the very late game, they do become pretty good again since they can run their military off of only 150 population compared to the normal 100 or 120 military population. So they just have a much larger military in the very late game. Um, but their units in general are just average and pretty not great. Um, but since you can have many more units, that can sometimes make up for their poor unit choices. Uh, so to me, they feel kind of like a higher skill cap sieve for players that like to focus on microing units and battles. Uh, because your economy will be pretty small as Dutch, but you can get a very large military that you won't likely be able to replace should you lose it. So it kind of feels like you have to win every major engagement as a Dutch and just keep your military uh, as big as you can to overwhelm the opponent. Uh, however, aside from that, I think where the Dutch actually really shine are mostly on naval maps where there's limited resources um, and you can get the Floyd, uh, you can get banks for resource trickle to trade for wood if it's limited on the, limited on the map. And then you can get Reuters to go raid the enemy on the land. Um, so it seems to me like the niche where like this is where the niche where the, uh, you know, all the unique aspects of the Dutch come together to be most useful. And it tempers their weaknesses because you can build fishing ships to kind of offset their small land economy um, and their lower settler train limit. 
So I think uh, naval battles are, are really where the Dutch come into their own. Um, in general, I think the Dutch have a totally different play style than other European civs, since everything revolves around your gold. You know, your villagers cost gold, you gather from mines faster, and you have access to the banks to provide coin over time. So I think if you want to try, try out something different and focus on microing a very large military force, then the Dutch just might be the civilization for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe and turn on those notifications for more civ overviews. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.